My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. So Jim, you know I'm working on a comic that has like the outlaw aesthetic. I'm taking a look at all of that old material done in black and white that has grit to it, uh, violence, duotone, crazy cross hatching, and lots of line work. Uh, very um, kind of like dark subject matter. Weird, weird comics, you know. Comics um, I found in my early days and have never let go of. Sure, and we're talking stuff like The Crow. Uh, we're talking stuff like Faust, yes. even. One that I discovered very late uh, in life, as of, like, say, just a few years ago, is this baby right here called Dragon Chang by Tim Truman, inked by Tim Bradstreet, which is something that you don't see a lot of. I uh, remember, like, Tim Bradstreet would come to the Pittsburgh Comic Con, and he always had a very interesting-looking illustration that would be associated with his name, like, in the little, like, you know, the bio piece in the in the program book. And I know his work from, like, role-playing games. Very interesting black and white, using duotone, but he would, like, f photo reference to death. You know, like, that's that's what he would do. Yeah, Kay Faber's out there watching this, probably know his work from Punisher covers. Sure. One of the, the more famous gigs that he's had. Yeah, and but before that, like, the, I specifically remember I, uh, artwork he did for a... Um, uh, a vampire role-playing game. A lot of long-haired vampires with sunglasses on. So the aesthetic here, man, once well, again... Let's not skip out on the credits here. Oh, yeah, sure. So Tim Truman, uh, writer, penciler, Bradstreet, anchor, would cover Stan Sakai with the logo design, and yeah. then uh, Wayne Truman doing the lettering. I don't know if that's a, a brother or son. And uh, our friend, friend of the show, Chris Pitzer, doing production. So this is the year... Chris Pitzer, publisher of Ad House Books. We have an interview with him up in the cartoonist kayfabe feed. Uh, did design for Eclipse Comics for a year. And Eclipse is one of those indie publishers that we have covered, or at least mentioned, a lot. They were very active for over a decade and published an incredible array of stuff. So I'm a giant uh, Tim Truman, Mark, man. Me too. And I was, wasn't too familiar with this comic. Like I said, discovered that this story originally was serialized in, I believe, a French magazine. I didn't know that. There's a piece in the in the back that describes sort of how it how it was doled out. So it was produced in 8 to 12 page sequences in five different installments serialized in comics anthology uh, published in five European countries, man. So the cool thing when you're reading a book that was like serialized uh, across, you know, many, many uh, installments is that each installment is probably going to kind of kick some ass. Yes. So there's not a dull moment. Yeah, and Truman, we should say, comes out of the Joe Kubert school early on. He's not in that first year with Bissett and Rick Veach, but I, he may be in the second year. And I think of those early guys as being very visually inventive and going for it and having distinct styles. Tim Truman fits all of that. He's really playing with some stuff here, man. And all of the Tim Truman kind of hallmarks are in here, man. Like, the kind of, like... Mad Max. In fact, they, Mad Max is brought up here. Absolutely. But whenever, uh, whenever the Kubert guys saw it, I think it was Bissett who said that uh, that looks like some Tim Truman stuff, you know. And 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 those dudes, the guys who made Mad Max, uh, is it George uh, Miller? Yeah, George Miller. George Miller, big comics fan. So what, uh, another thing with the Kubert School guys is they're attention to like directional devices that's something that joe would like kind of like hit you over the head with man so cool. what, so seeing this black with that black right there to frame this character mm -hmm. and with this hand pointing to this truck and then this truck point like this like zigzag that is not by accident i was even looking at the dashboard you have these like white lines interrupted and it's almost like the white lines of the road this is great. So this is this is kind of a post-apocalyptic world, and he is a truck driver that's driving like between North America and the uh, in Russia. There's a land bridge that has opened up, and uh, as you can imagine, that's some desolate country, and there are bandits and things. Wouldn't be an outlaw comic without something like this, right? He was doing uh, Scout before this, and, and possibly even concurrently, which was kind of set in a similar world. So here's some of the things I'm looking at, Jimmy, when, when I'm taking a look at Dragon Chang and, and mentioning that this is some visual fodder for me as I put together my next comic. Because I am using Duotone, and I'm taking a look at the treatment that Bradstreet is employing with the Duotone as like a drawing mm -hmm. media medium, I guess you would say. Uh, so we see, you know, the sun kind of like gleaning off of, uh, off of the water here. 
using it as like a smoke texture, using both variations of the duotone, one for kind of clouds and like atmosphere texture, the other for like the gross like exhaust from the uh, the truck, not to mention just like the interesting treatment with the um, cement for that bridge yeah. that crosses the Bering Strait or whatever. Yeah, the Bering Strait. This panel reminds me so much of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'm not sure I can tell you why that is, but it really feels like it, like some of the marks in the, in the grayscale. So right away, my question is, what's Tim Bradstreet doing? Like, how is stuff delineated for the duotone? Like, I, I'm not familiar with how that would work, how the division of labor would... Are you outlining things in pencil to say this is a cloud formation? Yeah, it's really interesting because, like, when you see this stuff, is it super early? No. Like, in, like, later volumes, you, it, later installments, you're going to see Tim Truman leave a lot of stuff up to the duotone. And the only way you could do that, I don't know that these guys collaborated much together, but they seem to develop a shorthand pretty rapidly. There's great stuff. So far, we've seen it in like the sky with the clouds, as you say, you know, the exhaust, but like you see it here where it's another layer, you know, like that's a really nice detail. Whoever's responsible for that, well done, because that's a corner that could have all been just one gray instead of having both and having the clouds there. And that detail is part of what makes Outlaw Outlaw. It's that obsession with the page. It's almost like you're 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 super close to it when you're drawing it or something. Like even this boat, you know, like it's incredible amount of detail for these these just tiny little de small amounts of page. Another thing I'm looking at when uh, trying I'm trying to instruct myself on good use and bad use of uh, duotone. Uh, by the way, I detect no bad use in here. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I have to work on myself is imagining how much like. How much duotone can you use when shading faces in terms of the view, the point of view of like how you see the character? So like if a character is a medium shot or a far away shot, can you use any duotone or will that duotone confuse the reader into thinking that that mark means something that you don't want it to mean? Because you want it to be shadow. If you're right. using duotone, you want that to be shadow, but it could maybe look like wrinkles or something. So like I notice that there's sort of like both here, like they're using pen and ink and then they're using the duotone for certain things. When, you fa when the face gets a little bit bigger, using more duotone. All of these little things are kind of like helping to teach me uh, the sort of like the best way to use the, the tools at my disposal. Another guy I'd recommend you look at is Eddie Campbell's Alec. He does some interesting stuff and it's not duotone, it's, it's uh, screen tone, but he puts it on top of each other and thinking instructively like there's some creative stuff there yeah so this must be another chapter maybe probably because i love this sequence as he gets into like a settlement like a trading uh place you know he's a truck driver so M moss isley's cantina you will never find a more worse hive <laughs> of scum and villainy just amazing i love all the graffiti stuff yeah he's super great, gray playing with that camera angle sometimes that's a great shot like, it's very possible that when you're composing your page, you're just drawing this straight up. But then, say you're light boxing or something, and you just tilt that, even by accident, you're like, oh, what do we have here? Oh, you just tilt that, and it makes it look far more interesting. Nice wordless sequence. Despite a million words in the graffiti and background. Yeah, because it doesn't betray the uh, the unwritten rules of men's urinals, yes. man. You just don't be talking to the dude next to you. Oh, boy. Here comes trouble. Yeah. And it's like with, I never uh, think of Galassi when I think of um, Tim Truman's work, but with this Tim Bradstreet finish, there's a Galassi component to me that I've never noticed. As soon as you said it, it makes sense in this story. Yeah. We're coming to probably my favorite part in the book, uh, in a, probably the very next page, where he, <laughs> oh yeah, like so, so they're like, listen, you know, basically, you know, put... Put it back in your pants, you know, get your dick back in your pants. And he's like, all right, cool, I'll definitely do that. And he's got the gat right <laughs> under the nutsack, shoots those dudes through his pants, kicks a little ass. And in Outlaw Comics, if you, if you ever see this, <laughs> you know what the very next panel is going to be. I would have saved it for a page turn. But there it is. A little dramatic. <laughs> yeah, I do love that. A little body language. <laughs> little dramatic, man. But uh, you know what's happening there. Love this spread, too. So great. Buffalo. ATV. Mro Haggard. 
cassette tape. Like, like to me, if you're a Tim Truman comics fan, this is this is everything is in this book. It feels like this is a labor of love, and it just shows. Look at how simple this piece is. Yeah, silhouettes, great silhouettes, so tiny. Really cool. And then Bradstreet will hit it with some pro white or white acrylic or something to just add like what you see in panels like this and panels like this many layers of depth like you could probably count them you know like the white would be a layer uh this is a layer of depth then this these elements another layer this background piece is a layer and then the white is another layer of depth like how many of that might have been five that feels a little crow like the character from behind yeah i agree and I've always kind of put Tim Bradstreet... He doesn't do much comics, but if he did, we would put him in the category of Outlaw with James O'Barr and such. So I've been noticing a lot of these thin panels, and sometimes they're vertical and sometimes they're horizontal. That's something I don't do a lot of. Right. I, I tend to stick to a six-panel grid, maybe a nine-panel grid. But these horizontal panels are really interesting and very cinematic before, long before the idea of like widescreen comics was popularized in the early 2000s. So this is one of those pages that I was talking about where the pen and ink work is yeah, I see that. far more minimal than what the duotone brings to the table. Yeah, the, the the mountains, that background layer is not, there's no line there. Yeah, nothing on the road. It's interesting. You have the similar effect in the window, you know, like that's all all drawn on duotone, so it, it does make me wonder like who's doing what, and it's possible that some of it's both hands, you know, like these pages could be going to Brad Street and then coming back through Truman's hands one last time, and maybe he's noodling a little bit of this stuff too, because there's so much drawing. There's some great texture on that metal. Yeah, it feels rusty as hell. It, yeah. feels, it feels like a piece of, you know, 20th century technology in a 21st century world or something. When my dad worked at the steel mills, they would he, he would refer to it as rotting, not rusting. That was like the term for it. Interesting. The way uh, metal would oxidize, but it has that. It's very organic. And soft freaking punks nowadays, they call that patina. Speaking of the patina, I like how these pages are slightly yellowed. It, it adds to the reading experience. This you, looks better now than when it was crisp white pages. It's something that I'm going to be using on my book, uh, but I want to make the dialogue balloons and stuff very easy to read, so I'm allowing the white of the page to show through, but I'm having like a little yellow. So narrow. Look at how narrow that panel is. Yeah, like I, when you thumbnail, like it... This can't be thumbnailed. Like, how thin would that be? And then how would you even know if you could fit anything in that? Very interesting. So Dragon Chang found love out on the open road. And you know that's never going to last. Doesn't work in an outlaw comic. Yeah, so the guy whose neck he snapped was supposed to meet up with these characters. And they were expecting to meet that guy. But it's not him. It's freaking Jag Dragon Chang. So they kick his butt and steal his whip. That feels turtles. Yeah. Probably the end of another sequence. You could you could almost always tell with these things, but look at that uh, smoke treatment. I think... Yeah, left, left for dead as his truck's driven off into the night. That I feels like the perfect cliffhanger. What I would do for this, because to break kayfabe, I don't have a page of duotone for every single page. I developed complete sheets and I'm applying them sort of digitally so that I have an uh, infinite amount of them. By the way, that looks like uh, taken from a Jaime Hernandez uh, reference piece. So in order to get this smoke texture, I think what I would do is just do that in black and then right. trap those lines, trap that black and, or, and, and use the, the duo tone. To, to do that. So th this is, once again, this is like the things that are on my mind as I'm looking through this. I would probably do this stuff in black because I just, I can't, yeah. I don't have the physical paper to add these things, so I have to do it in layers. This reminds me of Jaime Hernandez. I love this panel. Love the silhouettes and details, and it's Dragon Chang's face in the foreground just beaten <laughs> and bloody. <laughs> it's an amazing panel. Another uh, Turtles vibe? Very Turtles, yeah. 
getting those trees and, and foliage textures in the back. I, I've already That's done really that. That's really sharp. Yeah, I've already stolen some of that. That's a great way thing. to create variation in your in your page, and your background, and your panel, especially compared to like you have the hard black right above it. And here's the, here's another thing to make note of. Like when you see that, you see that there's far less duotone on the foreground characters here so that the reader doesn't get confused. Go back a page. I know you were looking at something. Yeah, I'm watching them. He sets up a wire to take off this this biker's head, basically. Actually, it looks like it doesn't. It, I guess it just takes, it Trip, catches the bike up. and yeah. he just slams in. There's a, uh, in World War II, they would do this for Jeeps. You know, guys would drive around in Jeeps. And so they would have like the head, they would have wires at like head level. And eventually like you'll see Jeeps and I have a hook on the front. And that's what the hook is for is to, is to uh, basically catch that wire so it didn't go, so it didn't take off your head when you're driving down the road in your Jeep. That's freaky as shit, man. The foliage texture from the trees on his cloak. Super cool. And snow texture, yeah. as a, in a, as a reductive fashion. It makes me want to insert a snow sequence into this story I'm it working on. It looks so good. There have been several comics that really nail snow perfectly. Great use of the horizontal panel there with the gun rifle. Like, perfect composition. And then, and then setting up the drama of the sniper shot. You know, like, when is that trigger going to get pulled, man? And, of course, you pull it on the right-facing page, so you have to turn to see what happens. Smart storytelling, man. Yeah, Tim Truman's been good for a long time. And there it ends, man. You, you don't have an outlaw comic if there's no head wound. <laughs> and then look at this. It gets it gets Lovecraftian on the, on the second That's to wild. the last page. Like, this guy, he isn't... He doesn't have blood flowing through his veins. He has some arcane... Uh, Cthulhu demons and shit. And he's called a reverend, too. So there it is, Another man. one of those great horizontal compositions. There's so many of those that have been strong. It seems like a gimmick, except it's used again and again effectively. So this is the Tim Bradstreet I know. Right. Like, this kind of art. And this exact kind of stuff is what would have been in the old, like, 1993, 94, 95 Pittsburgh Comic Con program booklet and you see that and it's like well i gotta go meet that guy i gotta go look at that guy's portfolios on his table man but highly instructive book very accessible book i would say you could find this in the quarter bins i see stuff. this book a lot when i'm back issue diving and man it's a fun one to pick up i highly recommend this one if you guys ain't familiar familiar get your hands on that uh you you, you could do far worse than getting dragon chang in your uh, comics collection but all this talk about the instructive nature of this this book here, it's time to get back to making our damn comics, man. We've got to put this education to use, Jimmy. <laughs> Kay Fabers, like, subscribe, and follow the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon. We'll notify you whenever we have new videos available. You can find cartoonist Kay Fabe merch at our spread shop. There's a link below the video to that. I just, I just told you guys what we're going to do. Tell them what they need to do, Jimmy. Read more comics. <laughs>